Okay, fear. <laughs> fear is focusing on the problem, not on the problem solver. The problem, fear makes the problem really big. And it also makes the problem sm solver very small. Fear has a way of capturing us and making our fear, our, everything we're worrying about huge and God very small. Jesus, you are all I ever need. You're my savior, Jesus, you are my Okay, I am, one, I am here today to talk to you about fear and hope and pray that this bless you. And my desire is that you will be free forever, forever from fear. Oh, I've got so much to share with you. Um, Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. A thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. And fear comes only to kill, steal, and destroy you. Psalm 34, 5 says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. You know, when Jesus came and died on that cross, he delivered us. Meaning when we say the word deliver, it always means, it always refers to deliver us from evil. Just like the, our father, the, the, our father ends with deliver us Lord from evil. Well, Deliverance means deliverance from evil, means rescue from evil. And Jesus came to rescue us from evil. And when Psalm 34 says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears, fears is something we need to be delivered from and have been delivered from. So fear is not something we are to entertain, hang out with, tolerate at all we have been delivered jesus says in act or acts 10 38 says and i'm just i don't have this in front of me i think it's acts 10 38 yes how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy spirit and this is peter talking god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy spirit and power and he went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil for God was with him. God came, Jesus came to heal all who were oppressed by the devil. And I just want you to know today that fear is of the devil and you don't have to put up with it. Just like that song that we sang today, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. But fear wants to enslave us, keep us, and hold us. But it is nothing. It is nothing but a lie and a thought. And we will be enslaved by thoughts. And we, we are enslaved by a thought. And we, that song is such a declaration. If you can sing that song, find that song. I'm no longer a slave to fear and sing it out. I no long, I am no longer a slave to fear because fear wants to enslave us, but we are no longer enslaved. We are children of God. Okay. Fear. <laughs> fear is focusing on the problem, not on the problem solver. The problem Fear makes the problem really big. And it also makes the problem sm solver very small. Fear has a way of capturing us and making our fear, our, everything we're worrying about huge and God very small. Fear is when we focus on our ability and faith and piety and not on the one who made us pious, faithful, and able. <clears throat> Fear makes us focus on ourselves. And when we're focused on ourselves, we have a reason to be fear. When we're counting on ourselves to get us through something, we have, we have a reason to be fearful. But when we're counting on God, we have no, there's no place for fear because we're counting on God. And fear and faith cannot occupy our heart and mind at the same time. One has to go. We will either be fearful or faithful, but we can't be both. So when fear comes on, we have to realize, oh, wait, I'm not that, I'm not being faithful. I am not full of faith. I am full of fear. Fear is faith in the devil. 
not faith in God. Fear is believing what you see, not what you don't see. Fear is trusting in the natural and not in the supernatural. Fear is demonic. Fear is a spirit. And fear is believing the devil is alive and able. Fear is a liar, and it wants you to have faith in a lie. Fear wants you to believe in the lie. You're going to die. You're going to get sick. You're, you will never get well. This is just your lot in life. This is who you are. You're perverted. No one likes you. You will be, you will be all alone when you die. No one cares about you. No one will be there to care for you. These are lies of the enemy that God, that the liar wants you to believe to be true. <clears throat> you may have heard fear is false. Fear, F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. You may have heard that because I've, I've seen that. It's, a, it's just a lot of people will quote that. Fear, F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. Fear is not false though it is it is false but it is real it is false evidence appearing real but if we believe it it's very real to us and it can kill us and destroy us james chapter 1 <clears throat> verse 5 and 7 says but if any of you lacks wisdom he should ask god who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly and he will be given it but but he should ask in faith, not doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind, for that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Fear will get us to receive zero from the Lord. Fear is doubt. When we're in fear, we're in doubt because faith left us, right? You can't have fear and faith at the same time. So fear wants to rob us of everything, everything. Fear will keep us from receiving from the Lord. Just like that said, but ask in faith, not doubting for the one who doubts is like a wave, get back and forth on the sea, tossed. Well, one day you believe, one day you doubt. It, but he should ask in faith. And I think a lot of times when we're asking the Lord, we're asking in fear. We're asking in desperation. We're asking in doubt. But God's saying, ask in fear. And the one, I mean, ask in faith. For the one who doubts is like a wave tossed by the wind. That person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. So fear wants to keep us from receiving from the Lord. If you're not receiving from the Lord, it's because fear just came and robbed you. And, and I'm speaking today about that, that fear, that fear of the devil, um, because that's the fear that grips us. And I'm talking about that fear today, the fear of the devil that grips us in the middle of the night, the fear that grips us when we hear a bad report. Fear is believing a lie. And mm -hmm. I am talking today about fear of the devil. This is the fear because he is the giver of fear. And I'm talking about that fear, that, that fear that wants to kill you. Fear is believing that the devil, what the devil wants you to believe. You've heard that, that worry is, worry is meditating on what the devil wants you to meditate on. Fear is yeah. faith. Fear is faith in something. And fear is what the devil wants you to have is faith in him. So he puts this fear on you that you might believe in him. And when we are, so fear is is believing what the devil wants you to believe. Fear is that thief that wants to kill you. Fear wants to also to isolate us and keep us to himself so he can consume us. You know, when you're in fear, you just are being consumed. You're, you're literally being consumed. So, but I want to encourage you today too, that fear is simply just a thought. It is a lie that we can believe and it'll destroy us, or we can recognize that it's a thought from the enemy and conquer it. And that's what we need to do. Recognize it, that fear is simply a thought. And it's a thought that we can and must and absolutely must overcome and destroy because Jesus said, do not fear. So we have to refuse to fear and make fear something that we are not gonna do 
never going to do and to not tolerate fear. I am, and I, I believe this is going to just so liberate us um, and free us to recognize fear when it comes and stomp on it and say, no, refuse it and resist it and not yield to it. And what we're doing is yielding to fear. And when fear comes, we cannot yield to it. We must not yield to it because, and instead yield to the Holy <clears throat> Spirit. It's so funny how few people want, few people will yield to the Holy Spirit. So few people will allow themselves to be overcome by the Holy Spirit, yet we're overcome by fear all the time. And we yield to fear, we believe it, but we won't, will not yield to the Holy Spirit. We will not speak in tongues. We will mm -hmm. not um, receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So we need to yield to, to the Holy Spirit. So when fear comes, we have to, number one, resist it, fight it, resist it, stomp on it. Take your authority over fear and replace it, replace it with faith because faith drives out fear. Faith and fear cannot um, occupy your thoughts at the same time. So you're yielding to something, yield to faith. Don't yield to, the, to, to fear. So say, you say fear, I resist you when it comes on. You know, this story, I think, I think it was just a few days ago, we had the story of Peter being um, released from jail by the angel. Acts 12, verse 1 says this, um, about that time, King Herod laid hands on, upon some members of the church to harm them. He had James, the brother of John, killed by the sword. And when he saw that this was pleasing to the Jews, he went after Peter and arrested him. So here's Herod wanting to please the Jews, and he kills John, James, the brother of John. And he, they loved it so much, he goes, I'm about to kill, I'm gonna execute Peter. So he gets Peter, puts him in chains between guards in the middle of the cell. And here's Peter, instead of fearing for his life, his life was over tomorrow as far as Herod was concerned. So here he is asleep between just like that just like just like jesus was asleep in the boat during the storm here's peter asleep between two guards resting that the, the angel who's coming to free him from this prison has to tap him on the shoulder and wake him up and he barely wakes him up he's in such a deep sleep that peter doesn't even realize that an angel is escorting him literally taking the chains off his body, opening the doors and rescuing him. But because he had no fear, because he was so trusting in God, he just fell asleep. Proverbs 10, what the wicked fear will befall them, but the desire of the just will be granted. I, I want to mention something today because I believe this is such a source of fear and it's called imaginations. Imaginations are something that you, okay, the other day I was following a motorcycle and it was a woman on this motorcycle in front of me on a very crowded street and she had no leather on, nothing on but her bare skin, a very skimpy, skimpy top. And my imaginations started to go like I, I started to see her falling on the ground and, and all her skin coming off. I mean, literally that's imaginations and those are wrong. When those come upon you, and let's say you're in bed at night and you know your children are out late and you don't know where they are and you start imagining, you start imagining what could be happening to them. They didn't call, where are they? Those are imaginations from hell. And when, when, I, when I see that woman on the motorcycle, I don't know her. My job is to pray for her, not to imagine anything happening to her. Imaginations like that are from the devil. So when you're, when you're worried about something, you start to imagine in your mind, and these are wrong, these imaginations. And I'm so excited to tell you they're wrong, because I think if we don't understand that they're detrimental and dangerous to us, we just 
think that's just part of life. We just make these imaginations, but when they come, you can stop them. Don't think, don't think those things. Don't let your mind wander. Don't let your mind think crazy thoughts like somebody's got her, somebody kidnapped my daughter. I haven't heard from her. Or don't think about your sons on a bike ride. They're falling off a cliff or you see, don't see them laying somewhere all bloody. Those are imaginations. When you let your mind wander, when you let your mind go where you shouldn't, when you let your mind make you fearful, <laughs> when you let your mind, you're letting yourself, your mind, your very own mind make you crazy and make you nervous and make you fearful. So just shut it down right away. Say, no, I trust God and do and think of something else. Start picturing them fine. <laughs> They're happy. Don't think anything negative is going to happen. Do not think. Because unless, as long as it brings you to prayer, that's good. If you're fearful of something, let it bring you to prayer. But don't, don't um, imagine, go into imaginations. Don't let the fear enter and stay. Don't, don't let that fear drive you to start thinking crazy thoughts. We start to think of fear of dying, fear of never finding a spouse, fear of um, rejection, fear of the dark, fear of nightmares, fear of being found out fear of losing everything, fear of having nothing and begging for bread, fear of going to jail. Can I, yeah. can I just add a little thing in here? Sure. Because I was suffering with great anxiety and I did a lot of reading on this. And anxiety is not a mental illness. Anxiety is a misuse of your imagination. Exactly what you're saying, Ooh, Mary that's Beth. that's so good. It's Say a that. misuse it's a misuse of your imagination because if you take a fearful thought if a fearful fear and it's only a thought but if you hook on to that fearful thought and then go attach it to your imagination i've had people dead and buried by the time i've got to the end of that imagination and that and what it is the second really important thing i want to say in this is your body does not know the difference between an imagined an imagined fear or a real imagined threat or a real threat. So you're triggering your whole stress response through an imagination. That is how powerful it is. And that's now the way I manage it now. When a fearful thought comes into my head, I either immediately go into prayer or I say out loud so the devil can hear me. I rebuke that in Jesus' holy name because that is not the truth. And I stop it bang straight away because of yeah. that knowledge that i have amen you know knowledge is powerful no, isn't it? <laughs> that is so good you said something when you first started anxiety is not a mental Ill illness it but is not a mental illness it is a misuse of your imagination come on god gave us an imagination to create look at the world look at look at what men have created good stuff but you misuse the imagination. You you attach that imagination with a fearful thought and you go straight into hell. You're Amen. living in hell. So fearful thoughts will come. Fearful thoughts will come, but we need to resist them and to refuse them and to cancel them and throw them out. Amen. Matthew 8, 23, it is the calming of the sea because I um, just want you to hear what Jesus says about fear. <laughs> he got into the boat and his disciples followed him. Suddenly a violent storm came on the sea so that the boat was being swamped by waves, but he was asleep. They came and woke him saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. He said to them, why are you terrified? Oh, you of little faith. So when Jesus sees us terrified, he knows we have no faith. He sees that we have faith. And when you are terrified, you have to hear Jesus saying, why are you terrified, O you of little faith? Lord, save us. We are perishing. Lord, save us is good, but we always take it to the next level. We're perishing. I'm dying. I'm never going to make it. Those are words that shouldn't come out of your mouth because it shows the devil your fear. And the devil will use everything you give him, will use it back against you. I want to skip down to a few more scriptures. I, really, I want to end this with us declaring, with us repeating something after me, and, and maybe for us to, to 
to have this weapon to know how to to attack fear because god wants us to to never have fear and i want us to get to the point where we are never afraid that we are always counting on god fear comes knocking on your door and if it comes knocking 10 times in one day you are to resist it 10 times if it comes a hundred times knocking on your door you're to resist fear a hundred times and do it immediately and do it strongly, strongly resist it. And you will find that you only have to do it once. Ser I promise <laughs> that's how it will get. It will get to where, where this fear obeys you immediately because it knows you're not giving in, that you're not going to yield mm -hmm. to it. So it gives up because fear has a hold on us and it must be resisted. Remember, fear is a spirit. God says in 2 Timothy 1.7 that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of a sound mind. So if you think of fear as a spirit, you will resist it. Psalm 34 says he delivers us from all our fears. Well, if God's delivering us from something, then he delivers us from enemies. If God's delivering us, that always means, the word deliver means, I'm delivering you from an enemy. So you have to think of fear as literally an enemy attacking you. And this is what we do, God says in uh, James 4, 7, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Because it won't leave you just because you need it to leave you. It won't leave you because you're crying and begging it to leave you. It must be resisted and refused and rejected and canceled and, and pushed away and then replace it. And, you know, sometimes we can't get rid of fear. Sometimes we can resist it and we can do all that. But if we just start thinking of something else, the fear will leave. If we just start to have faith, you know, maybe you can't say fear, go, it won't go. And you're still, because you're still occupied with that fear. You're still looking at the fear. You're still entrapped by that fear. That's when you just have to start saying, I trust you, God, and, and fill yourself with faith. And the faith will drive out the fear. Faith is powerful and it will drive out the fear. So you just say, Lord, I trust you. Father, I trust you. I believe in you. I believe you've got me. I believe I have nothing to worry about. If we can all turn to Matthew 6, verse 25 through 33, before we do that, I've asked a few people to, to share on fear today. Albert, if you have something you want to share on fear, I'd love for you to. Yes, um, some of it has already been explained by, doc yeah. by we Dr. Need to John. Hear it again. Uh, in fact, it, is, uh, it can be appropriate and good in some circumstances, fear, and especially uh, the fear of the Lord, as in Isaiah 11, 2. Um, as it was already mentioned. And also there's an example where it is justified and praiseworthy in scriptures is the episode of Nineveh and Jonah, you know, uh, because they feared the Lord. Um, uh, the king and the people converted, repented, and they fasted, and the king put on sackcloth. And in this way, God had mercy on them, and he didn't uh, chastise them. So fear can be justified and at times, you know, uh, in this respect. And, and also to um, encourage people to repent of their sin and to turn back to the Lord uh, and, and also to live in the grace of God. In, in that way, they will have protection from him and from the snares of the devil. So, and and I, I believe that uh, an, an antidote of fear is uh, that we repeat every day Psalm 91. <laughs> Amen. Psalm 21 <laughs> really protects us, you know. It drives uh, the out more we say it, uh, the more we say it, the more it becomes part of us, you know. So good. Diana has a word for us too on fear. Yes, I'm here. Uh, I was just looking over all my notes. Um, so I've been uh, looking into this and reading the word and learning some teachings and some of what I learned is um, and I'm sorry this is just me 
reading over my notes. Um, okay. One second. So is what Alan had told me to look into. 2 Timothy 1, 7 through 9, uh, which is, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Some notes I took on that is, you and some teachings is you can't function in both realms. You choose either faith or you choose fear. Um, what came to my mind is the Holy Spirit all throughout the Bible. He, the Holy Spirit, is capitalized in big P, little p. So when we're trying to draw on the little p, ourselves and the world, we have no power. Um, we have no fulfillment. When we're drawing on God, the big P, we have power and he gives us supernatural power, supernatural abilities. Um, and let me see what other notes. Uh, and then to Timothy one, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love and self-discipline. So then um, my other notes, uh, I'm sorry. Um, okay. So God gives you his supernatural power, his supernatural abilities, his plans, not ours. Um, and I think what's really dangerous is when all the opinions come in, which I didn't realize before, but now I'm starting to understand um, that's again, the little P us and our opinion. So I'm realizing how important it is to share the gospel word for word. Um, cause if I share my interpretation of it or what my mind has rem remembered it as it's not accurate and it's not of him. Um, and then lastly, I just wanted to share, um, you know, when something good worldly happens, we're like, woo, shouting it from the rooftops, you know, sharing it with everybody around us. And um, so I believe you should have that same enthusiasm about God and his word. So like I said, first, it comes from the gospel word for word, the Bible, um, and to read the word, share it with people. Um, and then we're able to pray to him for knowledge and revelation of it. So we share the gospel, shout it from the rooftops to whomever, and then we can, at that point, uh, tell the individual, um, uh, I'm sorry. Okay. It is that point we can share scripture. Then we can say to whomever, this is what God did for me. This is what he can do for you. And the spirit yeah. of the devil is coming at me currently. I, I was shaking as I was reading that, but that's what I've got. Praise God. Thank you, Diana. Awesome, Diana. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, the devil doesn't want you to share. Praise God. That's awesome. He didn't give us a spirit of timidity, but a strong mind. He gave you a spirit of power to go. Yeah. The devil wants you timid, not sharing, but praise God, you are not listening to that spirit. Dorothy, you had something to share with us too today. Yes. Hello everyone. Yeah, there she is. <laughs> now that everybody said oh, so much about fear, I, I know, I right? Like Sorry. I, can't, I feel like, how can I top any of that? Not that I want to top it. So I'm just going to go off of Holy spirit, what he wants me to say right now. And, um, fear is a liar. And, um, I struggle with fear a lot. And, um, I love what Lorraine said about the misuse. Anxiety is not a mental illness. It's a misuse of our imagination. And let me tell you, God gifted me with a wonderful imagination and it's, it's great, but the evil one knows that. And he knows that he can twist that around in my mind. And so I can go from complete peace at one moment and then be at the other end in a matter of seconds. 
And I struggle with that a lot. And I rebuke it. I'm learning to recognize it. I'm rebuking it. And I, I'm learning more scripture. As a matter of fact, uh, a couple years ago, I had my daughter's uh, really good friend that she can paint really well. She's an artist. And I had her put the scripture. The scripture really spoke to me. So I said, I'm going to memorize scripture. So I, I had her put it on a canvas, like about, I don't know, so big. And it's on my wall. So when I wake up in the morning, I say it every morning. And it's Psalms 18, 1 through 2. Um, I love you, my Lord, with all my strength. You are my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God in whom I trust, the rock of my salvation, my stronghold. So I have that scripture memorized and I say it the first thing when I get up every morning because I need to armor myself. The other scripture that I say, of course, Psalms 91, I don't have it memorized, but I say it every morning. So I arm myself with these because I know that uh the Satan wants to take over. So um, what else can I say? Um, the other thing I wanted to say was, um, you know, I'm increasing my faith. I'm, I'm, I'm building my faith muscles. And that only way I can do that is through the word of God. And it's in the Bible and it's his words. And the, our father is the loving father. And I'm learning who my identity in Christ. And that is so key to know who he is what he's about and what he's doing in my life and that I could share it with others. And the, the, the thing about it is I'm so great at recognizing it in other people and encouraging them when it comes to me, it's so hard. So that's my biggest struggle. It's like, I need to look at me outside of me saying what I would say to somebody else. So um, anyway, I know it's supposed to be like two minutes, but everything I, all my notes are completely have all been talked about. So I just thank you for this opportunity, Mary Beth, to share, share in the love of the Lord. And, um, I, my struggle, I struggle daily, but I'm fighting it with the word and just thank you all for, for being here today. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. I look at 49 to 50, New International Version. While Jesus was speaking, someone came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, he said. Don't bother the teacher anymore. Hearing this, Jesus said to Jairus, don't be afraid, just believe and she will be healed. Amen. On hearing this, Jesus answered him. They all heard it. Everyone heard the same report. Your daughter's dead. You know, this is what Jesus is adamant. He, I don't care how bad your report is. He said to him, do not be afraid. Just have faith. And whatever your circumstances, God is saying it to you. Do not be afraid. You're going to want to. You're going to want to be afraid right now. But do not be afraid. Just have faith. There's something else you can do. Because fear is knocking at the door, but there's something else you can do. It's a choice. Fear and faith is a choice. You can be anxious. Uh, Lorraine decided when she woke up that Monday morning to not let anxiety. She chose, but it's a choice we have to make. Fear or faith? Because <laughs> fear is, is going to confront us every bad report and want us to yield to it. Your daughter is dead, he said. Don't bother the teacher anymore. Come on. So, in a, a and and that's our viewpoint, isn't it? They're dead. It's over. It's finished. There's no coming back from that. And <laughs> don't bother. Interesting. Don't bother the teacher anymore. Don't yeah. waste your time with God because He can't do anything about it. I mean, there it is, right there the despair, the, you know, because we see death, it's, it's the end, because it says, your daughter is dead, he said, don't bother the teacher anymore. Come on. So in a, a and, and that's our viewpoint, isn't it? They're dead, it's over, it's finished, there's no coming back from that. And <laughs> don't bother, interest and in, don't bother the teacher anymore. Don't yeah. waste your time with God because he can't do anything about it. 
I wanted to share one more thing real quick. Um, so this past Sunday's service I went to, um, it was about basically LeBron James. Everyone there knew who LeBron James was. And um, they were saying, you know, do you think his children would say, oh, we really want to go to this gym. This is the best gym in the world. We want to work out there. No, they would say, your father is LeBron James. Come on. And how they correlated it to scripture and to God and to how much bigger we can't even comprehend our father and his love for us and our inheritance and um i was just reading this verse about it i can't find the exact um scripture but uh all throughout the day i say to myself greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world greater and you know at first it'll be anxiety filled but towards the end of it i'll just have this peace you know praise god you're using your weapon. You're using your weapon against that enemy. That's First John four four. You're using that as an as a weapon. Jesus, the the Bible says in Exodus, I mean in Ephesians, that the the word of God is the sword of the spirit, and you were using the sword of the spirit. You were using the word of God as a weapon against anxiety. Such a great example. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The greater one lives in me. Hallelujah. I just, I just opened it. I just opened it. And there was Jeremiah 10, chapter 10. And it's written, neither stars nor idols are to be feared, but the great creator of all things, the, just, the chastisement of Jerusalem for her sins. Woohoo! I just opened it. It was like that. That's awesome. That is God speaking, Christine. When he opens it up and gives you the exact word that we're speaking of, it's just so God, isn't he? Do not, do not fear other gods. Fear me. <laughs> it's kind of like that story of the man when he was speaking to the, in England, and, and the people said, be careful what you say. The king of England is there. <laughs> it's kind of like exactly what you just said, Christine. Do not fear what anybody else thinks. Do not be careful what you say. The king of England is in the audience. Be careful what you say. And then he heard this voice in his ear saying, ah, be careful what you say. The king of kings is in the audience. Ah, uh, amen. We're not to fear what other kings and other gods and anyone else thinks, but to fear only what he thinks, what he. Amen. And that's exactly what that scripture said, Christine, isn't it? it? Yeah. Our fear must be in what God thinks, not what man thinks. Amen. So I just want to say with this, this teaching, this scripture on Matthew 6. And when you're caught up in fear, you can't hear from Jesus. And Jesus is it's those times when you stop and listen to Jesus, like Christine did on her routine, on her retreat that you can find out exactly what's going on. What, what is the problem? Why do I have cancer? Why do I have um, some sort of addiction problem? He'll let you know exactly, but we need to have those quiet times with him where we can have the ears to hear because what he's saying, if you don't can't hear from him, open up your Bible so you can see him and then you can hear from him on exactly what you need. He's got answers for everything. So good, so true. Psalm 56, verses 4 and 5. But when I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. I praise God for what he has promised. I trust in God, so why should I be afraid? What can mere mortals do to me? When I am afraid in you, I place my trust. It has to be immediately. We have to immediately. We can't let fear get a foothold. When I am afraid in you, I place my trust. When I am afraid in you, I place my trust. When we are afraid, we must immediately place our trust in the Lord. And this is so foreign to us because we're going to be overwhelmed by fear. It's not going to be easy. You have to be committed to it. And once you practice it, it will be easy. 
It may be a fight at first because you're so used to being afraid. Joshua yeah. 1, verse 9. Can I say this? I love this. Yes, please. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Yeah, I command you be strong and steadfast. God, it's a command from God to be strong and steadfast. And do not fear. Do not be dismayed. Because when you do, you don't trust that your God is with you wherever you go. You're believing the devil who's telling you God's not with you. You're believing those thoughts that come in that say God's not with you. You sinned. You lied. You did something horrible. God's not with you anymore. Those are lies. God is with you. <laughs> no matter what, even if you go down to the deepest sin, God's still with you. Okay, I'm just going to read this, and we can all repeat after me. This is the end of my teaching. I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. I am not afraid. I am not afraid. I am not afraid. I reject and resist fear. I reject and resist fear. I will not fear. I will not fear. No matter what it looks like or seems like, I will not fear. No matter what it looks like or seems like, I will not fear. No I will not fear. Because I believe in God. Because I, because believe, I believe in God. God. I choose to believe with supernatural faith. I choose, I to, choose believe to believe with supernatural faith. faith. And lastly, I will wait on the Lord with expectation. I will, I will wait, wait on the Lord, on the Lord with, expectation. with expectation. Jesus, you are all I ever need. You're my Savior, Jesus, you are my King.